Why am I, the author of several science fiction and fantasy series, uploading some of my audiobooks to YouTube for free? The other day I had a reader say they saw my audiobooks on YouTube and they assumed they were pirated copies, so they avoided them. So I wanted to answer this question here since I am the author of the Death Before Dragons series, which I've been posting on my YouTube channel and also the Agents of the Crown high fantasy series. And first off, um, that reader was actually right to think that because I've been poking around on YouTube and I can tell you that 99.9% .9 of the audiobooks up here are pirated. You can tell just from looking at the channels. These are not by the author or the publisher. Someone stripped the audio from the audible version and is making ad money off them. And it is likely that at some point in the future, most of those audiobooks will be taken down as the publishers and the authors who hold the copyrights find them, realize they're there and file takedown notices. I actually did this myself when I spotted one of mine on YouTube and um, they took it down in a day. So all you have to do is report it and they'll take it down. But if you're a listener of audiobooks, you prefer there be audiobooks up here. Um, so actually maybe I'll be starting something here. Uh, so let me explain why I am putting them back up myself, uploading them on my own, the original copies, not copies stripped from Audible. So it's a bit of an experiment. As I'm recording this video, it's been about three weeks since I put, put my first audiobook on here, maybe four weeks. I started with a, a short story and a side novelette. Uh, I think one was a half hour, one was about an hour and a half of content. And then I said, well, let's go ahead and put up the first novel in my Death Before Dragons urban fantasy series, which is almost 10 hours long, and kind of see, you know, what happens. And, and why am I doing this? It's because I found out there's an audience here of audiobook listeners. As I was poking around, I saw that some of those audiobooks that were on here had hundreds of thousands of views. Now, a view doesn't mean someone listened to the end or even for more than 30 seconds, but that was enough to tell me that there is an audiobook listening audience on YouTube. Now, my books aren't gonna get the interest of a Lord of the Rings or a Harry Potter, but I figured I might be able to reach people who don't know my work yet, but who do enjoy audiobooks and who, if they stumble across mine, might also enjoy my audiobooks, and maybe they'll even become fans and go on to get some of the ones that are not free. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about some of the challenges of marketing audiobooks. Uh, it's challenging, it's difficult. Um, when the Kindle and the e-readers popped up back in like 2008, 2009, the, uh, we also got a whole industry of bargain book newsletters that um, got tons of readers who like deals uh, to sign up for them. And then we as authors or publishers could buy ads, sponsorships basically, basically to plug our eBooks on those uh, services, those newsletter services. Now, for those of us who self-publish, it was actually super, it's really easy to run sales on eBooks because we just upload directly to Amazon, Barnes and Noble and the other stores. And that means we can go in and drop the price, like say book one to 99 cents, or there are even ways to make it free. And thus we can encourage people to try our work inexpensively and also submit to those sponsorship uh, newsletters that are just full of readers looking for deals on eBooks. Um, and, you know, especially back in like 2010, when I got started, there wasn't as much competition uh, for eBooks because a lot of traditionally published books and especially older books weren't yet in eBook format. So it was really an effective way uh, to gain readers to run sales on the first book. And if they liked the first book, they would go on and buy like the other seven or eight books in the series at full price. And even today, um, when everything is in, available in ebook format and there's a lot more competition, there are still tons of ways to advertise your ebooks. But what about audiobooks? Uh, audiobooks are expensive to produce. Uh, as a self published author, I already pay for my own editing and cover art uh, for the ebooks and the print books. But then when I go to produce the audiobooks, I also need to pay more for narration and the production uh, from a professional. And depending on the cost per finished hour, which is what it's called, uh, that the narrator charges and the length of the book, I'm usually looking at anywhere from like $3,000 to $5,000 per audiobook. So you can tell that really adds up if you've got like a seven or eight book series. I myself rarely write anything shorter than 80,000 words. And I have lots of books that are well over 100,000 words. And when you get charged by hour, by finished hour, that really adds up. 
And after that expense, all that extra expense, there are not that many ways to effectively market audiobooks, not as many as eBooks. Part of that is that there's no way for us to go in and drop the price for sales on Audible, which is the biggest audiobook seller, Amazon slash Audible. These are the same company, just in case you didn't know. They set the prices usually based on the length of the eBook and we have no say. I cannot go into Audible and say like, hey, I want to run a sale on my uh, book one audiobook so that I can submit it to these uh, newsletters that will let people know that it's on sale. Because otherwise, as you guys are probably aware, audiobooks are pretty expensive. Uh, you know, Audible has a subscription service uh, where you can get borrows and a credit for a month for $15. But $15 is still quite a lot to pay for a digital something, right? So I would be happy selling my audiobooks for less. And if you buy it off a card, it might be like $30 for, for a fantasy audiobook. Um, but because, like I said, because Audible is the big player and where most of all of our sales come from, at least right now when it comes to audiobooks, it's behooved us as authors and publishers to check the box and say we're willing to be exclusive to them because they actually pay you more if you do if you check that box. They give you 40% of what they make on ebook sales versus if you say, no, I'm gonna be non-exclusive, sell my books lots of places, you only get 25% from them. And you know, if in 80, 90% of your sales are coming from Audible, a lot of people just say, okay, let me make them more money and I'll just be exclusive with Audible. But that really limits what you can do. You cannot lower the prices, you cannot run, you know, any sales. And you certainly can't put your ebooks up or your audiobooks up on YouTube or uh, any of the other subscription services that are coming along because you've said, hey, I'll be exclusive to those guys. But in the last couple of years, it's gotten easier to get audiobooks up on other online booksellers like Google Play and Kobo and Apple. Um, although Apple had a deal with Audible for a long time, so you could be there too. But uh, you know, there's a distri distributor now called Findaway Voices. It makes it easier for me to get in like 30 different stores. And even though Audible, even though Audible is still the biggest seller, um, a lot of us are going, okay, we don't want to be exclusive. We want to open things up and try some of these other options so that we have more flexibility with pricing. Maybe we want to sell them direct from our own stores. Um, and so this is something people are looking into now. And it's something I have done with my last two series, which happen to be the two series that I have up here on YouTube, Death Before Dragons and Agents of the Crown are not exclusive, are not exclusive with Audible and they're not with a publisher. So I have the freedom to give them away for free if I want, which brings me to why I'm putting them up on YouTube. Uh, last summer, I got tired of the ads on YouTube and went ahead and paid for the premium subscription and right away I was using YouTube uh, way more. It became my go-to place for a lot of the content I'd previously been consuming via podcasts. There was just a lot more stuff on YouTube. People were putting content up like crazy in the fields I'm interested in listening to it in. And with the premium, not only were there not ads, which was a lot more appealing to me, but um, I could turn off the video and just shove my phone in my pocket and listen to it while I'm out walking my dogs or in the car, anywhere on the go. That's why I decided to look up audiobooks and see if other people were also basically using YouTube to listen to audio. And as I said, there were. Okay, it's like, you know, hundreds of thousands of views on some of these fantasy audiobooks. And I thought, hmm, YouTube has over 2 billion monthly active users, and at least some of them are listening to audiobooks. Maybe this is a way to market my audiobooks. Maybe if I put some of them up here for free, listeners will want to continue with the series and pay, <laughs> or then maybe they'll check out like my Dragon Blood series or Star Kingdom audiobooks where I can't do this because they're either with a publisher or they're exclusive to Audible. Usually you're locked in for seven years when you click that box. But I thought, well, maybe if they check out some of my other stuff, I will make some income that way. And I can hear my fellow authors. I know what they're saying because I've heard them say it all along about eBooks. Like, aren't YouTube listeners just freebie seekers who won't ever pay for anything? Uh, they say the same thing with ebooks. And maybe to some extent that's true, but I've built my writing career and become a full time author by being willing to give away the first book in a series or even books one to three in a bundle uh, to get people into a series. And so I know from experience that it works. Not everybody's going to go on to buy the rest of the ebooks, but for the people that really enjoy them and are able to pay and willing to pay, I know from experience that they will they go on and, and buy the rest of the books. And beyond that, it's kind of 
as what's coming on as I'm recording this at the end of 2020 is these subscription services. With eBooks, we've had Kindle Unlimited for a while and some other less, less well-known ones, but they're becoming big now with audio, with audio also. And so I'm actually gonna argue that YouTube isn't a site full of freebie seekers, it's a site full of subscribers. People are either paying by ponying up money for YouTube premium, or they're paying with their time by watching ads. And YouTube makes money from those ads. And if your channel gets large enough, let's say uh, it's a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours a year. Uh, if it gets large enough, you can sign up and get a cut in those ads and a say of what kind of ads are posted on your content. So in this way, YouTube is exactly like Spotify, which at the time of this recording doesn't yet support audiobooks, but it seems to be something they are considering. And I've heard it from a number of authors is they can't wait to be able to upload their audiobooks to Spotify. And it's not because the money from subscription services is great. It's not. We all make a lot more from purchases of our audiobooks. But we are all hoping that Spotify will become a discovery tool for audiobooks, just like it has been for music. So here's the thing, though. YouTube already takes audiobooks. You just throw the cover up to make it a video and put all your uh, MP3 files, chapter files, into one video uh, I use, you know, you can use Final Cut Pro if you're on the Mac, and I'm sure there's PC software, but I can tell you after less than a month of doing this that YouTube is absolutely a discovery tool for audiobooks. I'm getting people finding my books through searches for things like fantasy audiobook, and I'm getting people also through suggested videos, which basically means that somebody listens to a fantasy audiobook, maybe it's the Lord of the Rings fantasy audiobook that is illegally appeared on YouTube. And then at the end of it, mine gets recommended automatically by the algorithms because it's another fantasy audiobook and YouTube's like, oh, maybe if you liked this one, you'll also like this one and the listener clicks over to mine. And so that's accounting for a good chunk of the people who are finding me right now. And what's interesting is the analytics are pretty good on YouTube. So you can see like which search terms or which videos sent you viewers that actually started listening, you know, that didn't bounce away right away after 10 seconds and go, no, this is the wrong thing. And it's kind of been amazing how many books that I would think are completely unrelated to mine that aren't necessarily even in the fantasy genre have sent me readers that end up listening for hours to my audiobooks. So it is the early days in this experiment for me, but I've already had people say in the comments that they found me this way, uh, that they're going to buy some of the audiobooks, or that they just really just enjoyed it, and I'm ho they're hoping I put up more. And I'm I don't uh, have anything bad to say about uh, people who want to read stuff for free or listen to stuff for free, because I it, when I was younger and didn't have any money, I got everything from the library. And you can still become a super fan of an author that way and recommend them to other people. And maybe those other people will have some more disposable income and they buy the books. So uh, I'm just happy if people enjoy the books, find them, tell a friend, uh, I really appreciate it. And that is sort of why I'm putting stuff up on YouTube. Um, and that's why I have been giving this a shot. And so far it's working out well. So thank you if you've checked out my audiobooks, and thank you for watching this video. And yeah, I really appreciate your time. Have a great new year.